It's time for Helpful Honda Mailbag Friday. The North Texas Honda dealers want to help you score some great deals on award-winning Hondas. Stop by your Helpful Honda dealer today or visit ntxhondadealers.com to learn more. So if you can go, if you got questions about high school football, college football, recruiting, lifestyle, romance, travel, we've got time for a few questions before we hit the road. Uh, Pickle is going off to Mexico. I am. Uh, Mallory's going off to Jamaica. Mm -hmm. Uh, Ishmael's going off to space. Yes. He's going to space. He's very excited about You're that. You're going to Napa. I'm going to Napa Valley. Um, one so. of our other girls, Emma, is going to France. We're literally, there's going to be no one We're in this office. <laughs> like, We're just scattering. We all kind of looked at each other and said, week off? Cool. Yeah, we really... <laughs> well, the thing is, like, coaching school is right around the corner. Yep. This is like... It's in between seven on seven mm -hmm. and coaching school, there's and only, that's the prime thing, because next yeah. week is all... Uh, clinics, coaching mm -hmm. clinics too. Yeah, the only yeah, there's or only media days. there's certain times that we can take take breaks. This mm -hmm. is one for like Fourth of July weekend is one, and then like the week after, and then like a th first week in like August. If you want yeah. to take off first yes. week in August, that's when like Powers usually mm -hmm. does it. So I, we kind of split up, and mm -hmm. it works out well for us too. That if one of us are going to be gone, instead of trying to do the show with like a bunch of scattered people, we might as well all just hightail it for a week <laughs> absolutely absolutely so <laughs> we do have some questions yes okay so if you've got questions high school football college football recruiting lifestyle romance travel let us know we'll get to as many as we can Pick um we'll one of them this isn't necessarily in our purview you could say but were you surprised by all the big 10 news yesterday no no um, <laughs> i say I was, you I step was, gave you credit you basically called your shot on the ticket the other day it's it's been imminent like it's it seemed obvious for for a while the fact that it's happening so quickly is a little interesting and the fact that the big 10 is the one that was on the front foot and said no it's not going to be one super conference it's going to be two mm -hmm. like we're going to be the super conference like we're going to we're going to bow up with um with the sec um that's particularly interesting this is not the end of this by the way no. um there's another shoe to drop um i would love to see the big 12 be proactive for the first time in their ever-loving ever history, <laughs> um, and go out and say, all right, Arizona schools, come with us. Colorado, come with us. Utah, come with us. We're going to form our own 14-team conference, and we're going to become – we're going to start poaching because right now, right now for the Big 12, for the Pac-12, the Pac-12 is reeling, mm -hmm. um, and they are ripe for the picking. And so if you're the Big, big 12, I think you want to you wanna go and, and see if you can do that because here's the thing. I promise you – I promise you, the Pac-12 is now calling BYU, and they're saying, "How serious are you about the Big 12? Um, how serious are you?" Um, they're calling, you know, the, the Texas Tech. How serious are you about the Big mm -hmm. 12? Do you want to come come with us and play in West Coast football? Um, they're going to be proactive because if they sit on their hands, whoever sits on their hands the most is going to lose here because there's only room for one. The Pac-12 and the Big 12, like they are, they are the they are the two weakest of the Power Five. So they need to make a move here um, because the poaching's not done. The poaching's not done. This is not. This is only going one way at this point. So if, right. you, if you ain't first, you're last, to quote Pretty a Pretty much. Man. So uh, <laughs> it was a little surprising only in, in the fact that it happened so quickly and the fact that it was the Big Ten that was so proactive. Mm -hmm. um, I think Oregon's got to be on the move somewhere. Yep. Um, I think Oregon probably calls the Big Ten and say, hey, room for one more, something right. like that. Um, it's gonna travel. Be the the only I think the only surprising thing out of all of that was just like that they're doing all sporting programs at those two schools. Mm -hmm. And the only reason I say that is because football has the money to travel all the way across the U.S. three or four times. I'm not ignorant. Do you want to tell me that women's golf has the money to do right. that, or even women's basketball, even sometimes men's basketball, if you're mm -hmm. not really a basketball school. I mean, there's mm -hmm. just so many layers to that. I think that was the only surprising thing in yeah. all of that. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be really interesting to it's see a lot of travel costs. I mean, to go from USC to Rutgers. <laughs> Dude, is... and you want to talk about time zones, too. We talked about time mm -hmm. zones a little bit earlier. It was like, I mean, that's, yeah. a, that's a big difference. Yeah. I mean, like a, you know, a three o'clock game on the East Coast kicks off at noon on the West Coast. Mm -hmm. So they're going to have to consider that. But, uh, they, they, you know, the, the Big Ten has obviously staked their claim as being one of the, one of the two super, super conferences. Maybe there's room for a third or maybe the, the other two are just going to dissolve. You know, who knows what happens to the ACC. The ACC's got some some assets that are valuable. Florida State, Clemson, Miami are all valuable. But then they've also got a lot of chaff. Mm -hmm. Like Georgia Tech is not a valuable property. No. Um, you know, uh, certain certain other teams in, in, in the ACC are not valuable properties. Mm -hmm. And so um, 
it's going to be really interesting. Uh, there's teams in the SEC that aren't valuable property. It's all it stretches. Uh, it's uh, for sure, but like Vanderbilt's been in there. So yep. like, what do you do? You're gonna what kick do you them do? out? <laughs> you're gonna kick Missouri out? Like maybe, maybe you're just like sorry, like it's not working out for us. Anyway, um, what else we got? Um, this one was directed at me. It said from a former Caw grad, which I respect. Uh, what did the Mean Green do to change Katie Davis's mind and pull out the transfer mm, portal? He had a chance a at question. some real NIL money at Ole Miss or A and M, and let me go on the record by saying I don't have any inside information into this. I don't know what he got offered. I don't know what talks were happening. But I think that this is a trend that you're going to see a little bit more often. If mm-hmm. you want my like real hot take on it, is the fact that guys can enter the transfer portal like that and go see what else is out there. It's almost like window shopping a little bit. You're kind of walking mm-hmm. out to see what other options, what money is a program like Ole Miss, what money is a program like A&M going to throw at you if you want to focus just on the NIL deal or how far deep down the roster you're going to be. And it might have been, I don't know this for a fact, but in my mind what it seemed like from everything that I read was just the fact that he realized that he was going to go just be another guy on a and M squad or at old Miss's squad, or he could stay at North Texas and be the guy, have mm-hmm. the potential to be one of the best defenders that UNT has ever had. So, I mean, that was just a personal decision within him, but I don't know anything specific. That's just lead- reading the tea leaves is what I got out of that. Yeah, I can see that. I think that, I think that, I think there's going to be a lot more flirting with the with the transfer portal mm-hmm. than you think of like I'm going to check it out and then I'll you know maybe I'll come back I'll leave the door open um so I don't know we'll, well see. and you can but you can look huge, at that it's a huge coup for for North Texas it's you're a, right. it, you can look at that as a counter offer too mm-hmm. I mean if you say if North Texas donors were to see hey he's our best player on this entire team is about to leave us for A and M I bet we can muster up some stuff like mm-hmm. I think you can do that just to kind of flirt and bargain your way through it from sure. either way absolutely um. Question is Let's do two more. Okay, why does a town like Gladewater have two small schools, Gladewater and Union Grove, both within eight minutes of each other? I know they're separate ISDs, but why? Well, so hmm. just to not have a mega school? No, um, usually I don't know specifically about Gladewater and Union Grove. Mm-hmm. I don't. Um, you know, there's also I, I um I believe there's um. Is Gladewater Sabine in a um? Uh, there's Sabine ISD, and that's technically in Gladewater as well, or technically in Liberty City. What the address is in Gladewater. <clears throat> the sad truth of it is that usually it's uh, a certain class or a certain demographic that wants mm-hmm. to split off and have their own school district, and and it's kind of a you know I don't know if that's the case with Gladewater, um, but I know that that's the case in other places that mm-hmm. they're like we want to go and we want to have our own little area, you know mm-hmm. it's it, it's it's kind of like it's kind of like that Highland Park's an example. Highland Park is its own school district in the middle of Dallas ISD, and they were like we want to have our own yep. school district for reasons that are important to them. So uh, that's the uncomfortable answer uh, to that. Uh, I don't know if that's the case with Gladewater, uh, with, with Gladewater, but that is that is usually mm-hmm. uh, what happens, is yep. that is that um, they want to go and have their own, they want to have power over their own school mm-hmm. instead of being, you know, in yeah, they, they want to divide it up into a, into a, in, into a place that they can control. I was going to say, and this is a lot more relevant typically in a bigger populated area, mm-hmm. like you mentioned, mm-hmm. Highland Park, Dallas ISD type of thing. Um, it is a little bit more obscure to see that in a very small town. Sure. And I wouldn't say Gladewater is incredibly tiny, but no. yeah, that's, it does tend right. to happen more in that. So those cases where it is a small or small town mm-hmm. then yeah it gets it's about, a little it's, it's, it's about, kind of eye raising it's about making it more local control right and and, and for school districts to want to have th- have the school be exactly what they want it to be um you can read into that however you will yep. we got one more uh yes best and worst vacation you've ever been on as we set sail the best vacation i've ever been on <sighs> my wife and i went to europe and mm-hmm. that was great I also loved my first trip out to Big Bend. My first trip out to Big Bend was just awesome. I had a great time. We drove out there. It was just like it's it really it's really fits what I'm about what I'm looking for. Mm-hmm. My worst vacation. There was a time It wasn't bad. I don't know if I've ever had a really stinky vacation. Right. I was just going to say, I don't think anything I've had has Back been, a couple like, years ago, my wife dud. and I went to San Francisco. Uh-huh. And, like, it was fine. It's okay. I'm about to fly back to San Francisco now, but uh-huh. we're going to Napa. Um, that was okay. The other, th- Another thing that, like, another vacation that we had that was only okay 
Um, this was a family one, but my dad got the idea that we were going to go on this big road trip through the Midwest. Mm -hmm. And this was, this was actually, it was when I was a kid, but we drove all the way up to like Milwaukee from Dallas, um, all the way up to Milwaukee. We stopped a few places. Um, and it was, it was fun because we went to ball games in Chicago. We went to ball game in St. Louis. We went to ball yeah. game in, in, um, Milwaukee. That's the exact like that. same road trip we made, but we stopped at Six Flags instead but of being, ballparks. We are <laughs> built different. Um, but being in the car that long, I remember being like, all right, this is... It's a lot. We this did, is a lot. Yeah, we did over 3,000 miles <sighs> in the... As we went all the way up, like, from Lano to Wisconsin yeah. was the peak, and then we came all the way back down. So, that it was a blast. But, yeah, we went to a bunch of different Six Flags. I think if I had to say mine... And mine's a little dicey because I was lucky enough in college to get to study abroad for six weeks over in Europe. Mm -hmm. So, it's like, that's not necessarily a vacation, but if you want to consider it that I wouldn't necessarily argue with it like I was going to school and I was learning but I mean ultimately it was awesome to live there for six weeks so that is kind of a weird answer to that um I did get to go to Hawaii for two weeks as my high school graduation present so that that was yeah, awesome that's awesome um family vacation wise we went on a crappy cruise once Oh really? Like oh, that we've there was a, there was a run where my my dad got really into cruises and uh -huh. we went a few times. And we went on one that was stinky. Yeah, was not good. That's that might be it. The only time on vacation where I haven't uh, uh, maybe like the worst one I've had. Uh, I went to Daytona Beach for a spring break trip one mm -hmm. year, and it was great. But the uh, there was a cold front that hit the northeast and it sent it all the way down. So we woke up one morning on spring break and it was. 39 degrees in Daytona beach. So that wasn't, it wasn't bad, but it just kind of stunk. You mm -hmm. finally get out of, you know, you're on spring break, you're looking to have fun on the beach and then you're sitting there in sweats because you're freezing. So right. that kind of stunk. So there you go. But yeah. And with that, we're going on vacation. Yes. Hey, thanks for watching this clip here on YouTube. If you like this kind of stuff and you want more of it, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. And remember, you can watch us live every weekday at noon at texasfootball.com, Facebook, Twitch, or here on YouTube. And if you want more of the best coverage of football in the state of Texas, check out texasfootball.com and become a Dave Campbell's Texas Football Insider at texasfootball.com slash subscribe.